Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. So why am I excited about getting up at 4.30 in the morning to start a video? Well, there's several reasons. Uh, if you listen to my family, they'll tell you I'm a loon. So there's reason number one. Number two, today we are cooking again with dried chilies. Every time we've done this, the meal has came out with an incredible, deep, earthy, rich flavor. So I'm excited about that. Uh, number three, we're doing a little bit of sous vide today that we don't do very often. Uh, every time I have sous vide, it has came out fantastic. Uh, another reason, we're also experimenting today. So here's the background. Uh, I saw a video on sous vide everything. Uh, Guga cooked some incredible looking tortas arrogatas. He did it in a birria type sauce, which gave him a consomme at the end into which to dip his sandwiches in. And it looked absolutely amazing. Uh, he used short ribs, which I absolutely love. But then I got to thinking to myself, self, right now people are looking for more economical ways to do their meals. So could I replicate the same meal using cheaper chuck roast instead of the short ribs? Well, today we're going to find out. I've got my jewel sous vide ready to go. Also, the Ninja Foodie, the new smart lid model, has a sous vide feature. Now we've did this before with Chuck Steaks, we know it works. Uh, we're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna do the short ribs over here in the Jewel. I'm gonna do the Chuck over here in the Foodie. Uh, they're gonna cook for about 12 hours and then we're gonna put together our glorious sandwiches and find out, can you make these sandwiches even more economically? So here we go. Uh, first of all, I need to double the sauce recipe that Guga had. He used eight guajillo chilies. I'm gonna use 16. Now, a lot of times when you're using dried chilies, the recipe is gonna tell you that you want to de-seed them, de-stem them, de-vein them, and then you're going to end up toasting them. When you do that, what you want is good straight peppers uh, that's very easy to cut down the side and then open up. So when you're going to flip those, when you're toasting them, uh, you don't have a million different pieces to flip, right? Well, this recipe doesn't call for these to be toasted. Uh, we're gonna de-seed them, de-vein them, and then we're going to rehydrate them. So this is a perfect opportunity uh, to use your peppers that are all crooked. When you're doing the toasting method, try and pick out the flattest, straightest peppers, it'll make your life so much easier. But that's gonna leave you with some twisted, weird looking ones, right? You save them for this, because this recipe, because we are gonna rehydrate them, and then we're going to chuck them into the Vitamix, which is gonna basically liquefy them, uh, it doesn't matter how many pieces this comes out into. So this is the time to use those. So I'm gonna get these de-stemmed and de-seeded, then we'll move on to the next step. We'll see you then. All right, so I've got all the stuff now for the sauce which is gonna be a marinade when it's cooking and it's going to be a consomme to dip our sandwiches in in the end. Uh, I got all that prepared. So my 16 guajillo chilies are over here in boiling water, um, softening up. You need to leave those in there for about 15 minutes. For each of my sauces, I have half a large white onion that is uh, not finely diced, just roughly chopped because Vitamix is gonna take care of that. Also in here are eight cloves of garlic. Uh, I've got a teaspoon of cumin for each. I have a can of chipotles that I'm gonna divide between the two. This is a place where you can control the heat. If you've watched our videos before, you know the girls don't like heat for heat's sake, so I'm gonna put about three whole chipotles in each batch. And then where I am deviating from Guga's recipe, he uses two cups of chicken stock. Well, we use better than bouillon for our chicken stock, our beef stock, vegetable stock, whatever. They came out with this smoky chipotle stock. So that's what I'm gonna use for this. Cooked with it before, it really doesn't add any heat either. Mm, just that deep, rich, earthy flavor of chipotles, which we absolutely love. So. That's ready to go, but I don't wanna make that sauce till I'm just ready to put the packages into the container over here with the Jules sous vide 
and over here into the Ninja Foodi. So now we need to hit our meat with a blowtorch to add some extra flavor, get some uh, good charring on the outside of it. What I have here is about a three pound chuck. Uh, in a perfect world, I wanted a two pound chuck and also to show that you can do this more economical, I really wanted a choice one, but when the girls went out to the store, I didn't give them proper instructions. You know, if you want a certain thing, you gotta be very specific, but even this 100% uh, natural chuck roast Angus, $5.99 a pound, okay? The short ribs that we got, and you can get the short ribs uh, anyway. These are sort of chopped up in cubes. You just don't want that flacken cut because that's gonna take you forever to get the meat off the bone at the end. This here, $8.99 a pound. So we're gonna do this experiment to see if we can use $3 a pound cheaper meat, a cheaper cut, and still get the same incredible flavor. Now, what these short ribs have that the chuck doesn't have are these bones in here that are gonna add some delicious flavor to the broth. So I went to my local butcher shop, which for us is off the hook in Goodyear, Arizona, and I got some marrow bones. The marrow bones were $11.99 a pound. So this here probably is about a buck, buck 50 for this piece right here. Uh, I'm gonna put this in with the chuck to get some of that marrow to add to the sauce and the consomme in the future. Now I'm gonna get my meat together on a tray. We're gonna go outside, cause I'm not brave enough to do this inside, or maybe I'm not dumb enough. Uh, I don't know about that. But anyway, we're gonna go outside, get this meat charred with a blowtorch, and then we're gonna be ready to put it in the bags, make the sauce, and get them a cooking. All right, now we're outside. Crazy early in the morning. Let's get to charring some meat. Okay, so I uh, just perfectly made the sauce for the, uh, the chuck and uh, did that without the cameras on. So that's okay, we got a second batch of sauce to make. But what I did was I made the sauce, I poured it in the bag with the chuck roast and the marrow bone, got that sealed with my vacuum seal, and then I put it in my Ninja Foodi, set it for 185 degrees on sous vide mode for 12 hours. So this is already going. So I mentioned uh, if you don't have a vacuum sealer and vacuum sealer bags, you can put this in a freezer gallon Ziploc bag or even a larger bag if you need it, one and a half, two gallons. As you submerge that bag in the water, that's gonna push the air out of the bag, get as much air out as you can. Go ahead and seal your bag with the zip, zip and then make sure that that is either closed pinned or clamped to the side of the container that you're using to sous vide in to make sure no water gets in there and you're good to go. So you don't need the fancy, fancy stuff, but we got it, so we use it. Okay, so let's make uh, the second batch of sauce, which will be the first one for you. So into my Vitamix goes my eight Guajillo chilies that have been rehydrating in that hot water. With that goes my half onion, uh, roughly chopped and eight cloves of garlic. And once again, down in the description is all the ingredient amounts, directions, everything you need to pull this off. Into that, I'm gonna put uh, three chipotles and adobo. This is where you can control the heat. If you want this to uh, have a bit more bite, put some more in there. But I do not want the girls to kill me, so I'm not gonna make it too spicy. A teaspoon of cumin. And then our two cups of chipotle broth. We'll get all that mixed up. That sauce goes in with our short ribs. Work it around a little bit, get them all coated, and I'm gonna get this vacuum sealed. Now get the handy dandy iPhone, go to the Jewel app, and we're gonna set that Jewel for 185 degrees. And there we go. We're gonna set that timer for 12 hours. Now we're gonna get our short ribs submerged in there. Make sure we got enough water. It needs to be fully submerged. And we do. And then I'm gonna put the lip of this right here. Sort of 
secure it. And we are good to go. So about nine hours from now, we're going to make an incredible sauce for our tortas, and then we'll put them all together tonight. So we'll see you then. All right, so the meat's still cooking. Um, we're going to deviate again from how Guga made his sandwiches. He made a very good looking sauce to put on him. But what do we have for you? We have, well, you know what makes Taco Bell quesadillas? Taco Bell. You know what makes Taco Bell quesadillas so damn good? Part of the secret is their creamy jalapeno sauce. We're going to make that and we're going to put it on our sandwich. Now, don't ban me from Mexico forever for doing this, for putting a Taco Bell condiment on a torta arrogata. But I'm gonna tell you what, it's gonna be delicious. Let's get it going. So in a food processor, put three quarters of a cup of sour cream, a quarter cup of mayo, and we love the Kewpie, two tablespoons of diced pickled jalapenos, and two tablespoons of the juice from the can, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of chili powder, and then just a pinch of cayenne pepper. You want it hotter, put more in there. Now we're gonna blend all those incredible ingredients together. Recommend you scrape down the sides at least once. You can see all my paprika and chili powder got flung out there. All right, then get that in the container and get it in the refrigerator. Uh, we're about two hours away from making the sandwiches right now, so that's why I'm making this now, to get it in the fridge and let it set up better for us. All right, we've been sous vide the meat for 12 hours now. Now what we need to do is get our consomme out of the bag and then our meat out of the bag. And on the short rib side, we need to separate the meat from the bones. So we'll get that done now. I've already turned off the jewel using my phone. All right, pro tip, this is gonna be freaking hot. This has been sitting in 185 degree water for the last 12 hours. So it's probably gonna be about 185 degrees. So what we're gonna do here to get our consomme out is we're gonna cut a corner of our bag up here. And then we're gonna use that to pour out our consomme. All right, then I'm gonna dump the meat onto a uh, baking sheet so it's easy to separate, and then I'm gonna put it in this uh, casserole dish so I can keep it warm in the oven. Plus, it'll let it cool for a little bit so we don't uh, burn our little paws. Foolishly, I'm gonna try and start this without letting it cool first, because it smells incredible. See the bones falling right off there? Oh yeah, that meat is super tender, look at that. All right, toss the meat hunks over here and then we'll shred them. We'll get that shredded and then I'll get the chuck out and we'll take a look at that. All right, as the girls shred off camera the short ribs, we'll get to working on the chuck. They're doing it off camera because it's Naked Thursday. Oh. We don't want to get demonetized and we have yet to start our uh, Galley of the Sun OnlyFans page, but it may be coming, you never know. All right. And I'm keeping the consomme separate too because we'll see if uh, the multiple bones that were in the short ribs ends up giving us more flavor from the bone marrow than my chuck roast plus that one marrow bone. So we'll get, test that too. Giving you the full service here. Um, this is our third Tortas Aragatas episode. On the first one, which you can see right here, uh, I did it with uh, grocery store, deli bought roast beef, cooked it in a sauce, made a pretty good sandwich. The second one was part of our two day Day of the Dead collaboration with Jim of Jim's Kitch Kitchen. Make sure you give him a check. Uh, on that one, we went a little bit further. We made carnitas, so pork, cooked it all day, made fabulous sandwiches. This is the first time we've done the slow cook on the beef and did this, and I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, let's get our consomme drained off. We'll try and be skilled and keep the marrow bone inside the bag and get the chuck out. Woo, dang, that's hot. All right, it is just as tender as the short ribs. You can see that easily shredding. 
Once I get this all shredded up, I'll do the same with the short ribs. I'm gonna add about uh, half a cup to a cup of the consomme back to the meat, get it stirred in there, get some of that good flavor. All right, a cup of the chuck consomme on the chuck and a cup of the short rib consomme on the short ribs. All right, now let's get to making some tortas. Let's check this out. So got a couple of bolio buns here, or rolls, bolio rolls. Get those all cut up. And here I have a very large amount of shredded Oaxaca cheese. Perfect cheese for this. Behind me, I have a cast iron skillet that is getting preheated at medium heat. Once that uh, is nice and hot, then we can do the next step. As we're waiting for that, hey, if you're liking what you're seeing, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, never miss an episode. There is a ton of different ways to do tortas arrogatas. What is your favorite? Put it down in the comments. All right, so here's what we're gonna do to both sides of our buns. We're gonna put down a good handful of Oaxaca. Take that down to about medium, medium low. We're gonna put that down in about the shape and length of our bun. We're gonna let that melt for a little bit. And then we're gonna take our bun and press that into there. And then we're gonna wonder, why the hell didn't we get a spatula ready before we started this? It's okay, I found it. Let that go for just a little bit. See, it's all good and melty. Oh, will you look at that. A vision of beauty. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for each side of each one of our buns. No pretty, pretty presentation this time. We're gonna figure out which one's better, the short ribs or the chuck. Can we go cheaper and still have an incredible sandwich? So we got our bread. We have our creamy jalapeno sauce that we made earlier. We've got our consomme. We got some chopped up cilantro. Just grab the meat and let's go. Because I'm right-handed and I put the hot mitt on my right hand, uh, I'm not very coordinated. Get some of that creamy jalapeno sauce on him. A little bit of fresh cilantro, top bun. All right, cut these in half and make it manageable. First, I'm gonna try the chuck. Got our sandwich, gonna dip it in the chuck consomme. Mm. I'll tell you, if the short ribs is better, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to tell because that is freaking incredible. Try the short ribs. I, I say it's a draw. Uh, you can do this with cheaper meat. Let's, let's get the director in here and see what she thinks. What you think? Good. Ah, the suspense is killing me, killing me. Can you tell a difference? Is one better than the other one? I couldn't, but I'm a man. We have limitations. No difference. There you go. So, your answer is, you can do this with Chuck. Save yourself some bucks. And, it also told us that the Ninja Foodie performed just as well as the jewel that's designed for this. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. Until we see you next time, fair winds and following seas. Oh,